Hello everyone, this is Geeta, TGT in Science, DMS RIE Mysuru. Today we shall be learning about the cell structure and functions. We have with us Gayatri and Spurti. We shall all learn together about this cell, its structure and function. So, let us get started. Can you see this and can you guess what it is? Ma'am, it looks like a wood. Yes, it looks like a wood. This is a cork made up from the bark of a tree. You know what is a bark. So, when the tree gets older, the bark gets peeled off. So, this is made from that bark. Okay, This is a cork actually. They use it to plug the bottles or any container. So, children, around 350 years back, a scientist named Robert Hooke observed the slices of this bark under a microscope and he, he could observe some empty room like structure. So, he was the one to coin the term cell because it looked like the empty room for him. The term cell means like that. So, what is a cell? Okay? And he thought that, he concluded that all the plant organisms are made up of cell. He also thought that only plants are made up of cell. It was only later, somewhere after about 150 years that it was generalized that all the organisms, whether it is plants or animals, they are all made up of cells. Okay. After many findings, they came and generalized and proposed cell theory, which were postulated like this. According to the cell theory, all the living organisms are composed of one or more cells. The cell is the basic unit of structure and organization in organisms. Cell arise from pre-existing cells. So, now, what is required for construction of a building or a house? What are the materials you need okay, before you construct any house or a building? You need, you must be needing some basic materials, right? Can you list some of the materials? Mom, cement and bricks. Okay. Iron and nails. Anything else? Mom, sand sand ok many more ok. So, from among these materials which one do you think is the basic and the foremost important thing to construct any building? Ma'am bricks. Yes bricks is not it. The moment you see any under construction building what is more conspicuous is the bricks ok. So, in the same manner in the similar fashion the cells which are there in our body forms the basic and the structural unit of any organism or from any body, is not it? So, let us perform an activity and see how does this cell appear. So, you must be you know, very much interested to know how it appears since it forms a basic thing of any organism, ok. Ok ma'am. Now, let us perform the activity to observe the cell. For that we need to mount an onion peel. And here are some materials which I need to mount the onion peel. So, what is this? Ma'am, it is an onion. Ok, good. And we have materials like this. Can you guess what it is? Ma'am, it is an color. Yes, this is actually saffronin stain which is required for the staining purpose. Ma'am, is it water? No, this is glycerin. We will be using it after we stain the cell. We have another materials like these are embryo cups, we will be using it. We may need 
a pair of forceps brushes to mount the peel. This is a watch glass. These are called slides. We have cover slips here and we may use blotting paper. So let's get started. So I'm going to cut this onion into two halves. You know this is a example for a reduced stem. So what part you see, what part edible is actually the scale leaves of the plant. The stem is a reduced here. So I am going to get a peel from this. Just I am going to take an inner peel. You can just take a small thin peel. I may need a bit of water here. Can you see this? Yes, ma'am. A peel can be of two to three millimeter square. Okay. So we will see that it does not get dehydrated. The moment you take the peel, we will see that it is kept in water. I am going to stain that peel in the saffronic stain. So, I am going to transfer this peel in the stain. So, I am going to keep this peel in the stain for 2 to 3 minutes so that it can absorb it. The purpose of staining any peel is to enhance the parts. So, what all a cell contain what parts the cell contains you know that a cell contains a membrane a nucleus and a cytoplasm if you have got to see all the three parts very clearly it is it becomes very necessary to stain it so that the nucleus get stained and it becomes conspicuous so as a next step, I am going to wash this peel so that the excess stain which is there is removed. We are not going to over stain the peel, otherwise, the structure will become too dark. So, we are washing it using the water. I am going to make this peel a bit shorter. Again, one more wash in water so that the excess stain is getting drained. 
So, now I am going to finally mount this peel in a drop of glycerin. Glycerin prevents the drying up of specimen and also helps in getting a clear picture under microscopic lens. I may use this needle. This is the cover slip. I am going to hold like this. I am not touching the center. I will only hold it by its edges. So, this is a very important step. By practice, you will be able to mount it. So, while mounting, I am avoiding the air bubbles so that the peel get does not get dried. I'll use a brush and transfer this peel here. So, just observe how I am mounting. I am holding the my cover slip on the slide at an angle of 45 degree and slowly I am drawing the cover slip over the peel, avoiding air bubbles. Yes. Any extra solution whether it is a stain or glycerin, I am going to wipe off using this blotting paper. See that the slide is ultra clean before placing it on the stage of the microscope and see that the material is at the center of the slide. Now the slide is ready for observation. Now let us put this light under the microscope. you can come and observe this slide. So, just like how bricks are you know different in shapes, in colors, in, in the similar manner cells too can come in different shapes, different sizes, okay, in different different uh, forms. Okay. They have different different function to perform. Ma'am, can we see cells through our eyes? Yeah, some of the cells you can see. Okay. Usually many of the cells are microscopic in nature, microscopic in the sense their sizes will be very very small. You measure in terms of a micrometer. You know what is the micrometer? One micrometer is 1, 1 by 10 to the power 9 meter will be 1 micrometer. So, usually the cells size ranges from 0.1 micrometer up to 1 to millimeter. So, you can see egg cell, egg is a macroscopic structure that is a cell. So, you have seen ostrich egg, its biggest 
Okay. So, in that way some of the cells you can see. Otherwise, these cells which are microscopic you need a an equipment to see the cell. What is that equipment? Ma'am microscope. Yes, microscope is not it. So, the smallest cell is 0.1 to 0.5 micron in size. Okay. These small size can be uh, in the form of bacteria or even the cells which are there in our body are very very small. Yes. Ma'am which is the largest cell? You have seen ostrich egg. So, that happens to be a largest cell. As I told you the hen's egg you can see in the similar way ostrich egg also you can see and uh, that happens to be the largest cell. Ma'am are the cells in an elephant larger than the cells in a rat? Spurti, the cells need not be larger or smaller in elephant or rat. Yeah, that way you cannot compare. The cells could be almost of same size. Only thing is the number of cells will be more in elephant. In rat because the organism is small the number of cells will be less. For example, I told you there are many types of cells in the body of an organism. There are nerve cells, there are muscle cells, there are blood cells, the burn cells. All these cells are present both in elephant and rat. So, these cells are similar. The nerve cells look nerve cells of a rat look similar to the nerve cells of a elephant. The blood cells also look similar to the blood cells that are present in the elephant. Only thing is these different cells which are called as blood cells, nerve cell, muscle cell, bone cell, they come in a different form or a different pattern. So, these are the different cell which you can see. So, this is blood cell, this is a nerve cell, this is a bone cell, this is muscle cell. So, can you see all these are coming in a different pattern. These are plant cells. So, can you see it is coming in a different pattern. After observing all these different types of cells, can you tell one thing which is coming in common? Ma'am, in all the cells I have noticed that there is a dot like structure in middle. What is that? The dot like structure what you find in all the cells, many cells you observe. So, in all the cells you have find something that is present somewhere near at the center. That structure is called as nucleus. It is a main component of any cell which will control the function of a cell. Okay? And around the nucleus you find some structure okay, that is called as cytoplasm. So, around the cytoplasm there is one membrane that covers the whole structure. So, that is called as a cell membrane, is not it? So, what does this cell membrane do you and think? It is the outermost covering. Okay. Since it is the outermost covering, what do you think should be its function? It will have a protective in function. Okay. So, a cell in all will have three structure. One is a cell membrane, within that you have a cytoplasm and within the cytoplasm you can find the structure what is called as nucleus. Okay. Ma'am, does it have a door or gate for entry or exit? Yes, Purti. A cell membrane is porous in the sense a membrane will have small small pore here and there through which the cytoplasm can move from one cell to another. All these cells are tightly packed and are connected with each other through this pore. Okay. So, and this is a cell membrane which is 
also called as plasma membrane. Ma, do the trees stand tall because of the cell membrane? In case of plants, in addition to the cell membrane, there is one more membrane what is called as cell wall and these cell wall are made up of cellulose which is exclusively present in plant cell only. Ma'am, why only in plant cells? Plant have this cell wall in addition to the cell membrane because they cannot move from one place to another place. They are not locomotive. Whereas animals can move from one place to another. Plant have got to withstand against the extreme temperatures. Sometimes it is too hot, sometimes it is too cold. Weather conditions, external other conditions. So they need to be more stronger than animals in some way. That is why they have got a cell wall in addition to the cell membrane as a covering. Ma'am, how many cells are there in human body? A human body can have 30 trillions of cells. 30 trillions? Yes, 30 trillions. How much is 1 trillion, Sporthi? Ma'am, 1 trillion is equal to 1000 billions. Yes, and how much is 1 billion? Um, 1 trillion is equal to 1000 billion and 1 billion is equal to 1000 million and 1 million is equal to 10 lakhs. Yes. Ma'am, do all the human beings have the same number of cells? The number of cells can vary from an individual to individual. Like how I said the number of cells could be more in elephant and less in rat. In the same manner, human beings as I said, they have around 30 trillions of cells. But the number can vary, like if you compare a baby to a fully grown adult. Naturally, the numbers, number of cells will be more in adult and very less in a baby. If you know uh, any individual or organisms, Okay, we all will start from actually a single cell. Okay, the very first cell will be a zygote, which is a single cell. The zygote will further divide and multiply in number, and that is how we grow and we become many celled. Okay, you know that there are organisms which can be of a single cell. Ma'am, what about other organisms? Do they all have trillions of cells in their body? There are some organisms which have got only one cell. The one cell itself is an organism like paramecium, amoeba, euglena. Okay? They themselves are an organism. The one cell organism performs same activities as a we do. We have many cells. Okay? We also perform many life activities like respiration, digestion, ejection, etc. In the same way, single cell organism can also perform all these activities by itself. And these single cell organisms are called as unicellular organisms. Uni means single. Multi means many. So, we are all multicellular organisms. Can you give one example, one more example apart from human being for multicellular organism? Ma'am, a dog? Yes. One more example can you give? Ma'am, elephant. Good. Now, children, look at these pictures. They are different types of cell found in human body. Now tell me, what is the shape of this red blood cell? Ma'am, it is an oval shape. It looks oval shape, but it changes its shapes from spherical to oval to flat. How about this muscle cell? Ma'am, it is long. 
yes it is it looks long but it is called as a spindle shape at both the end you can see it is tapering this shape is called as a spindle shape cells what is the shape of this nerve cell ma'am it is long yes it is long but this has branches so it is a long branched structure how about this amoeba ma'am it is also having branches actually amoeba does not have a definite shape it keeps changing its shapes and these projections or what you said branches are actually called pseudopodia pseudo means false and podia means feet they appear and disappear it shapes these pseudopodia are used for movement and for feeding so this amoeba also can change its shapes like rbc but amoeba is not a cell but it is a organism and this amoeba is a single cell organisms that is unicellular organism and it can live independently but ma'am why do cells have different shapes these different shapes are related to their specific function for examples rbc that is red blood cells moves to different body parts supplying nutrients and oxygen so through the narrow passage of blood vessels they can easily pass through by changing its shapes muscle cells are related to muscle contraction so spindle shape is helpful in contraction nerve cells are long and branched for receiving and transfer of messages to different parts of the body ma'am what gives the shape of these cells you saw that a cell had three component the cell membrane nucleus and cytoplasm this cytoplasm which is a jelly like substance has cell organelles what are called as ribosomes mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum chloroplast lysosome etc these organelles are responsible for various activities of the cell ma'am why are they called the cell organelles just like our body are made up of many organs even the cell are made up of their cell organelles we have different organs like kidney lungs heart to perform its own functions in the similar manner cells too have got its own organelles which are responsible for the various activity so they are called as cell organelles okay ma'am what is there inside the nucleus inside the nucleus there is another small spherical body this is called nucleolus and the most important part in the nucleus is the thread like structures called chromosomes ma'am why are they called chromosomes they are called chromosomes because they are colored bodies chromo means color and soma means body ma'am what is the function of chromosomes chromosomes carry genes and help in transferring of character from parents to offspring or to their children that is called inheritance ma that is very interesting are there any more functions of chromosomes yes in addition to their role of inheritance chromosomes acts as control center of all the activities of the cell such as respiration digestion excretion etc therefore students the entire content of the living cell is known as protoplasm ma you mean this nucleus no 
protoplasm includes cytoplasm and the nucleus it is the living substance of the cell now that you have learned so many aspects of cells we shall now try and compare and contrast plant cell with that of a animal cell we can look into this chart and identify what are the common thing that is present in both and what is the difference they have got now let us compare the plant cell with that of a animal cell can you tell me what are the differences between the plant cell and animal cell by observing this chart the plant cell looks larger in size yes generally it is larger than animal cell what are the other prominent differences you can notice in plant cell cell wall is present in animal cell cell wall is absent yes very good then vacuole appears to be bigger in plant cell yes there is a large vacuole at the center in plant cell it covers almost 90% of the cell and animal cell the vacuoles are of 2 to 3 in number and they are always smaller in size when compared to the plant cell spurti can you find out one more difference which is prominent in plant cell plastids are present and in animal cell the plastids are absent yes chloroplast is one type of plastid that gives green color to the plant cell which is required for photosynthesis that is not required in animal cell so it is absent in animal cell golgi bodies are present in both the cells but it is called as dictyosome in plant cells the centrosome is absent in plant cell and it is present in animal cells usually plant cells are rectangular in shape whereas the shape of animal cell is round or oval or irregular lysosomes are present in animal cell whereas it is absent in plant cell now can we tell what are the similarities that we can observe in both plant and animal cell in both the cells we can find cytoplasm mitochondria golgi bodies ribosomes nucleus and cell membrane very good now let us summarize what we have learned today using this concept map each one of you are going to tell me one concept or aspect which is written on one particular color can we start with spurti cell was discovered by robert hook in 1665 good gayatri can you read one cell has is unicellular and multicellular cell can be unicellular or multicellular one dialogue another dialogue cell is having uh, nuclear uh, nuclear membrane mm -hmm. nucleus okay and cytoplasm and cytoplasm two dialogue you tell me okay you remember hmm. cell can be unicellular or multicellular good there will be nucleus nuclear membrane and cytoplasm in cell very good can you read one more aspect of cell spurti cell can be in many shape like branch spiral spindle good what about its size gayatri cell size can vary from 0.1 micron to few centimeters very good 
I hope you have learned so many aspects of cell today. You have understood about the history of the cells, who coined it, who observed first, what are the parts of the cell, what are the cell organelles clearly. In your higher class, you will be studying about the cell organelles and their function in greater detail. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.